Hi, I'm Caitlin Martin, and I'm here to share a little bit of the story of the Building Equity-Based Summers Initiative, led by a partnership between the California Library Association and the California State Library and funded by IMLS. First, a little framing of summer services in libraries that kind of positions how this initiative came about. So as we know, there is a pretty persistent narrative about learning loss. This is not just new since COVID, the summer slide is sort of the same idea. Um, and libraries, again, are implicated. So all across the country, there's this kind of focus on academic learning and summer and how libraries can bridge the gap. As we here at CLS know, learning goes far beyond academic learning. There's so many different things going on in communities and libraries. Um, but this is kind of a per pervasive narrative for many libraries is this focus on reading and focus on bridging the gap. Um, we also know, right, that libraries have been a major political and cultural battle battleground um, over the past few years. And so all these things together kind of made the California State Library really want to dig into what summer services look like how library staff are thinking about them, um, what might need to change from an equity perspective, and really how to support staff who are already embroiled in this work to think about equity and to be able to lead from that perspective. So what is what we call BEBS? Um, it stands for Building Equity-Based Summers. This is from their language. So in their framing, it empowers libraries to create summer services that are built on a foundation of equity designed with the community to ensure systemically marginalized groups engage with library services in new ways. It's national, so state library agencies are supported to facilitate a series of learning sessions for selected libraries in their state. And through these virtual sessions, alongside collaborative tools and a BEBS workbook, the library staff teams engage with equity-centered language and principles. They are asked to really deeply question their current library practices and share with one another their personal and professional reflections on all of this. After that series of sessions, they're invited to a community of practice and they have opportunities to become co-facilitators as more leaders in the field with new libraries coming on. So it's a cycle that sort of is going on concurrently to when these staff are thinking about reflecting on and planning their own summer services. So what makes this initiative different from the perspective of libraries is that it's a focus on systems in this training and professional learning sessions, not on a specific program. So instead of coming in and saying, hey, you should do your STEM program like this, this is a more equitable way to work with young people. It really focuses on interrogating the entire system and questioning the practices that have been in place for years. It also isn't just a series of sessions. The expectation is that people will continue to participate over years. It really emphasizes the idea of discomfort. And that is very uncomfortable and new to many library staff and many people in professional learning situations. Usually it's come, get something that's useful and go. This is really different. So a little bit about the project. Um, it started in 2020. It started with 19 library systems in California. So the size of the dot actually represents the, the number of libraries within that system within any particular area. In the 2022-23 year, it extended to those other states with dots. Um, so in total, in 110 people working across 48 library systems across seven states participated in that year. And then this coming year, five new states were added and you can see them in green there. And five more states will be added next year. These, so these system evaluation questions I'm going to share today first have to do with staff, the individual participants. So to what degree do perceptions and confidence of participating staff shift over the course of the year? Second, how are these libraries positioned for equity-centered change? And then finally, what is important and necessary to advance this work? So for methods in this evaluation, we had participant observation at learning sessions and meetings, artifact review of the kind of things that were coming out of these sessions, and then also pre-post surveys. 
So let's talk about the individual staff members. So really looking at, well, were perceptions and knowledge and confidence shifting over the course of this year? So interestingly, we asked a question about if they were confident about their capacity to build equity-based summers at their library on a five-point scale from strongly disagree to strongly agree. And so actually the participant scores went down significantly and a third of people actually decreased their score on this measure. But findings were more complex. So as participants discussed the scope and timeline necessary to develop a foundation of equity and service, understanding of what capacity entails shifted, perhaps accounting for that drop. So after summer, staff were asked to describe the two most important things they got out of participation. Very few directly described increases in confidence, but 25% reflected perspective changes related to recognizing success in the middle ground and the impossibility of perfect. One person says, I appreciate the liminal aspect of the work. Things are changing and it doesn't have to be perfect right away. Another person said, we tried some new and expanded partnerships this summer. There was some frustration as communication with people outside our organization is difficult. One key point from Bebs that I really noticed is that this is okay. Partnerships will be difficult sometimes and require us to go outside our comfort zones. Others highlighted the need for collective capacity in systems change. One person says, I cannot do it alone. We need to be a community and engage all vested groups and individuals to be successful. Along with these perspective shifts, were actually some positive changes in terms of specific activities that we asked about at pre and post test that are aligned with equity centered work. So staff were significantly more likely to say that they did this frequently and were confident in questioning current ways of planning services and conceptions about goals. They were also significantly more likely to express experience and confidence in balancing power and decision making across multiple voices. And this drastically jumped from 11 to 31% of participants. In terms of individual participants, this might be a scenario when a confidence drop may be an indicator of success, that deeper engagement with equity-centered ideas and practices goes alongside greater realization of the time and networks required to change systems. It's also important to pay attention to what didn't change. The measure that stayed the same and the lowest at both pretest and post-test was confidence and experience facilitating conversations about foundational concepts of equity, including those about race. So next we'll dig in a little bit to a question about organizations, including how are libraries positioned for equity-centered changes? So at the beginning of the project, 85% of participants agreed that their library ties equity to mission, vision, and strategic plan. Fewer, however, reported that their library has shared language and practices for actually doing the work, and only 15 agreed strongly with this statement. But there was a lot of variability. Staff with fewer connections to these sort of diversity, equity, inclusion related principles and practices at their library found it more difficult to bring Beb's conversations back to their colleagues. One person voiced, over the years, we've moved to an equity approach where we give options so it works for the customer but not all staff are on board with this. It confuses them. So what do we know about actual changes? We asked library staff at pre and post to what extent they agreed with the following statements about their library summer services. So last year they reflected on summer 2022, this year they reflected on summer 2023. When thinking about summer 2022, 90% of participants said their library summer services looked consistent from year to year. While 68% of respondents still agreed that their 2023 summer services were pretty similar compared to last year, ratings of agreement were weaker. 53% of library staff decreased their rating of agreement, and 44% decreased their agreement that their summer services focused primarily on reading. So another question that was asked about summer services and compared for 2022 and 2023 was if summer was designed and implemented with community partners. While some people increased this rating, 40% decreased this rating of agreement. Again, we're wondering if this decrease is evidence of greater understanding of what community partnerships can and should look like. 
libraries are changing expectations about what it means to engage in these sorts of partnerships. So in the baseline survey, over three quarters agreed that their library had regular conversations with community organizations about community goals, strengths, and needs, and 62% reported opportunities for community members to have input into service. But a year later, at the end of summer, 80% reported that their library had identified needing to work on having systemically marginalized community members actively engaged as co-designers in all aspects of summer services. Open-ended stories from the field reveal areas for deeper inquiry for staff and for leadership. Some of these examples are less explicitly tied to an equity-centered approach and more library-focused than others, again leaving room for deeper conversations through a BEBS lens about what can be further questioned and adapted. The first example from Maryland really emphasizes the idea of partnering with a broker or community hub to help deepen their own understanding. She says, I'm excited to work with our local management board, the Partnership for Children, Youth, and Families, to explore where the communities are and help bring them to the table. A library in Idaho describes their decision to provide outreach to a local organization that provides housing for refugees. And they had initially tried to find a way for them to come into the library, but realized going to them would increase the time we would get to connect with the families. So then finally, we ask kind of this systems level question of what support is important and necessary to advance the work at the state and national levels. So first, we recognize the system implication when asking libraries to explore their why of summer services, including why they focus so much on participation. With staff really raised up this focus of summer reading programs and completers or finishers, or at least the number of people who signed up saying that that's what their managers and administrators expected. That's sort of how they measured success. People really started pointing to the State Library Agency themselves and saying, well, that's what the State Library asked for in these summer reading program surveys that they send out at the end of summer every year. And those are the statistics that are often shared out at the state level. And the bigger the number, the more successful the summer services were. And this deeper questioning has really led to some unexpected outcomes where state library agencies are questioning their own summer survey questions and thinking about how to collect metrics that show impact, but also reflect more variation and human-centered approaches to what matters. Some of the state library agencies have actually started to implement the BEBS uh, principles and indicators. Instead of asking staff to report just numbers, they're really asking staff to reflect on these ideas and do some self ratings of how they're doing in these different areas, which just is, is just conveying a different way to think about success. Another interesting piece that's come up is just this constant need to support and to support understanding of how systems work is really an intersection of individual support and collective knowledge building. So as one of the project leads reflects, so often equity-centered work is placed outside of self, not so in this space. I'm always thinking about what are the ways to help folks lean into the discomfort of having to do that self-work. Systems will not change if we don't shift as individuals, as communities, as a collective. Shared language is considered necessary, while at the same time, interpretations, reactions, and understanding of that language requires incorporating the self. But some things that are coming up as difficult for libraries trying to engage in this work. Um, one thing is navigating complex boundaries in roles, values, and power sharing. And for some, this is a really new idea that library staff even are considered people who are in a position of power. Participants also wonder how to respond when community voices are antithetical to equity and justice, such as the current trend of organized book challenges and opposing books that center gender identity, sexuality, and racism. Another challenge is prioritizing groups. Staff across sessions and across states discussed how to define and prioritize local historically marginalized groups. One shared, where to begin can be challenging. Challenge would be to find out which groups to target and bring to the table when there are limited resources or time. I want to make time for everyone and do everything. Library staff have also found it really difficult to embrace radical visioning. They often talk about the realities of their workplace and the frontline day-to-day -day at their library. One facilitator noted, as much as we talk about breaking free of tradition or ways of doing things, the default is what is familiar. That's how you know what to do. 
So more support is really necessary for bridging reality with visioning in ways that meet Beb's expectations and that explains the why, what, and how for staff and in ways that their administrators and managers can understand as well. What those outcomes might look like is really different from place to place. And then finally, there's a lack of systems and policies that provide time for relationship building and discussion. The issue of time as a barrier for change arose again and again in conversations, and participants emphasized the need for time-intensive and seemingly invisible parts of equity work, such as relationship building and program analysis and reflection, to be acknowledged and supported by colleagues and leadership. One person reflected, staff shortages and limited capacity makes it hard to do this extended work of breaking down, evaluating, and reinventing. Easier and quicker just to do what has always been done. So we look forward to talking with you. Thanks so much for listening, and hopefully you'll be at the CLS session.